When the Cedar fire broke out and encircled Rudy Reyes's home, he doused himself with water and made an impossible decision. My house was now on fire, couldn't stay in there. So I come out and basically made the decision to run through the fire line. I covered my face with my hands, lost this finger, that ear because the fire was coming from that angle. Rudy ran through the flames and survived. The water combined with heat from the fire created steam so intense it peeled off 75% of his skin. His nerve so badly damaged his sense of touch immediately turned cold. He was found disoriented and in shock along the road hours later. Doctors had to put him in an induced coma for two months and the next year of his life was spent in a hospital bed at UC San Diego Medical Center. During that time, I was having complications with the medications and the fact that some of these medications being opiate based were overdosing me. I was slowly dying from having this in me so long. So doctors decided to try medical cannabis. As they slowly introduced it to his body, he says his blood pressure went down, his muscles relaxed, and there was no need for morphine. And then ask him if they just want to come pick it up. Dr. Mark Wallace is with UC San Diego's Center for Medical Cannabis Research. He's been studying cannabis and its use for chronic pain for nearly two decades. He says his studies reveal cannabis is a safer and more effective treatment for pain than opioids. It's this inverted U with the THC and pain. As the THC levels go up in the blood, pain will go down until the point where it actually starts going in the opposite direction. As the blood levels go up, pain will actually start worsening. And so there is this therapeutic window. A therapeutic window where just the right amount of cannabis treats pain and replaces opioids for about 70% of his patients. The bottom line is I, I prefer to visit medical cannabis before we resort to an opioid. I, I think cannabis is much more conservative. I think it's lower risk. There's never been a reported death from medical cannabis or cannabis. Look at all the deaths annually from opioid use. Reyes says while he survived the fire, research like this is keeping him alive. Cannabis has made living with burns bearable. 75% of my outside skin is now missing that nerve that tells me pain. So in order to have any sensation, anything like that, it's always itchy. It's always crawly. It's always, and I could itch to the point of bloody, it won't make any difference. I smoke a little marijuana or ingest a little marijuana because there's different ways to ingest it now, and that goes away. Do you know how many pills it used to take to do that? A plethora of pills to do what one little plant could do. So instead of swallowing pain pills, he smokes marijuana, consumes edibles. And this stuff is aloe vera based. And soothes his skin with cannabis creams while spending small amounts of time under the sun. This is my chocolate mint. In his garden. I've expanded and learned more to the point where I'm taking care of other herbs beyond it. Even though his studies reveal benefits to medical cannabis, Dr. Wallace says more research is necessary to pinpoint dosing. But the research has been almost impossible since marijuana is still a Schedule I controlled substance, right alongside drugs like heroin, LSD, and bath salts. The DEA has it listed as a drug with no medical use. The National Institute on Drug Abuse says 9% of people using marijuana become dependent. The organization also says several studies link its use to an increased risk for psychiatric disorders. But again, more studies are needed to actually know how. Because it's federally illegal, it makes, the, it's, it, makes it extremely difficult to do research. And the reason is, is because since it's Schedule One, the only source for it is the, is the government, NIH. And that source of medical cannabis does not represent real world. So the push continues from both patients and researchers to make cannabis more accessible, especially to those living with chronic pain facing an opioid addiction. I'm in California and immediately UCSD gave me an option out. Not everybody got that. Not everybody got that like I did. I'm one of the blessed ones. Jade Hindman, KPBS News.